So everyone is talking to AI right now and trying to see what it thinks about their specific genre. And I thought, why not try it myself? Especially after I saw the video by Dutch Bushcraft Knives, where not only did they ask it what the best survival knife was, but also had it write a script for their particular video. Pretty cool. I wanted to know from AI what the top 10 multi-tools are that I could recommend to literally everyone. And this is their list. Let's take a look. So coming in at number 10 is the Leatherman Surge. And this is a really safe pick, by the way. Most lists are going to include the Leatherman Surge. It's really hard to not include it. It would feel like an outlier otherwise. And even though you need context to make any list, this is a pretty safe bet. So I'll give it to him for this, but it concerns me that this one is number 10. And when you see the rest of them, I think you'll understand. All right, so number nine is the SOG Power Plier. I'll be honest, I've never seen one of these being sold in a big box store. They're out of stock on Amazon. I'm not even sure you can get it on SOG's website. Yeah, I, I can't think of a single top 10 list that this tool would ever make. And, uh, We'll talk a little bit more about SOG a little bit later, but this is definitely not their greatest offering by any stretch and wouldn't make any top 10 list that I would ever make. The fact that they put it over top of the Leatherman Surge is not boding well for the rest of this list. Let's keep going. All right, now number eight, they have the Gerber Suspension NXT. And I have to say, I don't hate this pick, um, mostly because as a budget-oriented tool at $30, which is about what it costs, it's, it's pretty good. It's got a nice tool set. My problems are threefold with this tool. Uh, one, the quality control is hit or miss. Two, the materials, I'm pretty sure this is not in 420HC like some of their USA-made equivalents. And I would really like to see materials be improved and just at least hit the basics, which is like 420HC specifically. And then the third one is I've never really liked this blade, it's such a tiny little blade and it's partially serrated and it's not one handable. And it could have, all of those things could have been fixed. And uh, that's sort of a little bit of a disappointment, but it's not as big as the first two. It's a fine pick. And for $30 with the lifetime warranty, okay. It's just probably not making my top 10 list of all time. Now, number seven is the Super Tool 300. Yes, yes, this definitely deserves a top 10 list. I, yeah, it's a fantastic multi-tool and has some of the longest implements you'll find in any multi-tool. So the saws are longer, the files are longer, the blades are longer. It has a long reach Phillips, long reach flathead screwdrivers. It's a good all-in-one tool that's going to be reliable. And I've seen people beat the daylights out of this thing, drop it off of roofs, and it just keeps on ticking. So yeah, I mean, what's more to say? Super Tool 300, it's a good choice. All right, now number six is the Gerber Center Drive. And if we were gonna pick a tool from Gerber, this is probably one of the best ones. Uh, I will say some stipulations. If you're not familiar with the Gerber Center Drive, it is a really well thought out tool for the most part. I will say that sometimes the quality control is a little hit or miss. And the one thing that is absolutely abhorrent on this tool is the carbide cutters that come with it. I highly recommend upgrading to speed steel cutters, but you're gonna spend another 20 bucks to get those um, because the ones that come with it shatter like almost instantly and they still have not replaced them, which drives me crazy. The other thing that uh, you wanna be aware of is if you're having trouble grabbing onto something very thin, you have to fold out that bit holder because otherwise it actually stops the two handles from coming together with enough strength to actually grip something thin. So if you know those things, the center drive can be wonderful and actually a very good holster-based multi-tool. I don't know if it'll make my top 10, but it's not a bad choice either. I'll give it to him for this one. All right, number five, the Leatherman Rebar. Absolutely, no question, this would make a top 10 list, but I'm gonna be more specific. There's a version of the Rebar that I think is one of the best and it's not being pushed by Leatherman that really should be, and that is the knifeless rebar. The reason I like this tool so much is that it has all of the things that are not a folding knife, right? 
So if you are somebody who carries a folding knife every day and that gives you joy and you have a really nice premium steel and it's very easy to slice with all this other stuff, doesn't it make sense to have your multi-tool have everything except for that tool? I really like that it's an option and it's under seven ounces. So it's easy to throw in a pocket. It's easier to uh, set up with a pocket clip. You can actually attach one um, like the Night Eyes hip clip. You can use a dangler. It's, it's a good tool. Um, yeah, top five, sure, I'll, I'll buy it. So number four is the Swiss Tool Spirit X. Absolutely, absolutely a top 10, no question. Uh, but I'm gonna be even more specific. The new MX clip, something I didn't expect to happen, has been in my pocket a ton over the last year since it came out. I think it's less than a year, like six or seven, eight months. I love this thing. Um, one of the most compact, yet tool dense, you know, multi-tool that it exists and they make the highest quality multi-tools in the world, period, full stop. There's nothing higher quality than Victorinox right now. And they are very, very, very consistent on quality control. So yeah, top four, okay, I buy it. And now we get to number three, the SOG Power Assist. I wouldn't put it in a top 25. No, no, I wouldn't even put it in a top 30. No, I wouldn't even, I, there are many budget multi-tools I would put over the power assist. Yeah, let's just leave it at that. Doesn't belong here. It's not good. It used to be, SOG used to be a lot better when they were made in the United States and their quality control was better and their fit finish was better and their heat treatments were better, but not top 10 anymore. Just not. There's probably one SOG tool that I would put in a top 10 list, and it's none of the ones that have been shown so far. We'll talk about that some other time, but this is definitely not number three. Now, number two, they have the MP600. This is justifiable uh, for a couple of reasons. It's incredibly durable. It's very, very comfortable to use when you're talking about the plier. And there are specific variants that are almost impossible to match by any other brand. And the ones I'm referring to are the MP600 Blunt Nose and the MP600 Bladeless. These two tools really don't have an equivalency in any other brand, and they're very good. I will freely admit that. The same thing about the cutters with the center drive is true here. And uh, you wanna be aware of that, but when it comes to the actual pliers themselves, they did a pretty good job. With this, with this tool. And it's one of the few that you can actually field strip, take it apart, clean it out entirely, and put it back together. So yeah, I don't know if, I would never put it number two, but could it be a, in a top 10 list? Definitely. Um, let's move on. Now, number one is no surprise. It's the Leatherman Wave. And the Leatherman Wave is definitely the best selling multi-tool of all time. It's one of two tools that really help build Leatherman from the ground up, the other one being the PST, of course. And uh, it's, it's a great answer, right? It's a very safe answer. And without any more context, yeah, it's probably number one. But I think context is incredibly important. Is it the best multi-tool for everyone starting out? Is it the best multi-tool for a tradesman? Is it the most user-friendly? Like there's a lot of additional criteria that I think you have to apply when you're looking at finding the ideal one for you. So don't go by this list, please. Um, there are definitely some good ones that are listed, like the Rebar, the Super Tool 300, the Surge, the Wave, all of which are Leathermans, but they're not going to be good for every person. And so that's kind of where I sit on this. I think this was a really fun experiment, and I want to note that this list is completely different than the one that ChatGPT gave me last night, okay? And uh, I just asked the exact same question. In fact, I think the Q4, SOG Q4 was on that list. Anyway, this was a real fun experiment. And I'm curious what you guys think. What would be your top 10 list of multi-tools using any context you want? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching and we'll talk again soon.